Welcome back, friends. Last guy here, and it's time for the final episode of Origami King. So this is us reflecting on the Origami King. The convenient thing about this game is the museum. The muse. Because, um, thanks to it, we can reminisce on the game straight up through the soundtrack. That is a pretty nice thing we can do here. Not going to be that easy in a future game for sure, I'm sure. But the first thing we need to do is let's talk about the next LP after this one. So if you enjoyed this LP and you enjoy Nintendo stuff, well, the next LP is going to be a shorter LP, I assume? I don't think it'd be a very long one, but if it goes long, I will be extremely impressed with myself. We'll see. The next LP is going to be... Wait for it. So, let's tell the Breath of Wild. Now, you'll know we've already LP'd this game. But the thing is... Uh, Jinx bought me this for my birthday because we played on Wii U. But the thing is... Jinx wants us to do a hardcore run. I mean a real hardcore run. One life. Be smart about the gameplay. Be careful about the gameplay. Be as careful as we can be. And the interesting thing about this game... When it comes to doing a hardcore run is... You can't just only upgrade your HP. You need to upgrade your stamina, because if you don't have enough stamina, you're gonna lose your grip, fall off a tower, and die that way. So, when we get to this, when we do this LP next, the first episode, just take your bets. How many episodes is it gonna go? The episodes will be like an hour each, like around an hour, like this LP. Uh, just like, how many episodes it'll go? Um, how is the death gonna be? Am I gonna just lose my grip on a tower and die? Am I gonna lose my grip on a wall and die? Uh, is it gonna be lightning? Is it going to be a boss fight? I doubt it's going to be a boss fight. It's going to be a tower fall. I already know it. It's going to be a tower fall. Or I just fall down a hill and die that way. Like, roll down a hill. Um, I, I highly doubt combat's how I'm going to die. But it could be. I remember we died maybe 10, 20 times in the first... When we did Breath of the Wild back then. There's a lot of ways you can get killed. And we'll see how it, how it ends there. And after that LP, we'll decide maybe Ori in the Blind Forest 2. Like, what's well, not going to Ori in the Blind Forest. It's Ori and the Will of the Wisp or whatever that was called. Or maybe Star Wars Fallen Kingdom, because I'm a Star Wars I'm not, I'm a Star Wars fan and a Dark Souls fan, it's a Soulsy Star Wars, so that's something I can consider as well. We'll see about that, but this is going to be the next one we do for who knows how many episodes. Now let's reflect on Paper Mario. Uh, it took me about 30 minutes after we did the last video to get to this, because I could. it took me a bit to recover. It definitely took me a little bit to recover. So, going down the line, let's play Peach's Castle. So we started out the game, you know, got Peach's castle, and then you run into Peach. And... You just get Origami Peach, you're like, what the heck? Like, what's going on here? It's very creepy and everything. And then we meet Olivia! He's stuck in the wall, stuck in another dimension, which was funny. Then we see the first paper soldiers, we're in the Whispering Woods. And then we get to meet, uh, Grand Sappy Lines. Oh yeah, the old Grand Sappy is asking for help. Like, all right, we'll help this guy. And then... Wait, is this the one? Happy and Sappy? Oh, right. I'm gonna do the song. And then Sweet Sap Logins the theme, just using the background. Yeah, okay. So yeah, we save uh, Happy, Happy Sappy, Big Sap la Logins. And that was a funny surprise. When the music is going everything, that was the first big surprise of the game was that. Well, I think the first big surprise was the Thousandfold. Like, this is a really cool idea here. And then this with uh, Happy and Sappy with that song. And then Toad's Barbecue Food Eatery. Is this what, the, just that one song? Yep. It's funny though you could hit the things off the trees. And Olivia, first time at the bench, she's like, oh, this is gonna be a thing where she th talks about things at the bench. That's cool. The Graffiti Underground was really cool, seeing the line art down there and then eventually the coloring of it. We got the first Earth Valumental boss. Oh yeah, the offering box was a funny thing. It was funny doing that in Giant Shell Falls. Dance it out. Oh yeah, when she gets the power. She cheerleads and everything, which is funny. Like, beating that boss was fun. The first boss fight, that was pretty fun to do. I enjoyed that a lot. And her becoming a big old turtle and dancing around was very funny. He was like, oh, this is really cute. She's such a fun character. And just her having a little bit of her character in those giant forms was really cool. Then we get to the Overlook Tower. And... 
colored pencils, yell the colored pencils are wrong, that's really cool. But then the colored pencils attacking us in the elevator was really freaking cool for sure. That was, I like that, that was nice. And then we fight the boss. See where we go. Very much a soldier on patrol, Toe Town, Ghost Town. Removing the streamers. Okay, so they have it all over here when we remove the streamers. Like the music for it. Each one has its own song? Really? Toe Town's song changes as you remove the streamers. <gasps> Next one. More music as you go? I didn't notice that. Wow, so as we move the streamers, the music went up and up, and I did not catch that. That is such a cool detail. It just gets more and more glorious. That's really cool. It becomes the opening song. That's cool. And the Muzi. Battle Lab and all that stuff. More elegant version of the museum. Picnic Road. Picnic Road. When was Picnic Road? Overlook Mountain, Overlook Mountain Occupied, Overlook Tower, Missile Launch. That's when we get attacked in the elevator, I assume. Oh, no, it's before the elevator, I think. It's before or after. Monster Soccer, Fossil Dry Bones, Mystery of the Magic Circle. And the Red Streamer fight. And then we, of course, we fight the Colored Pencils. That was a really fun fight. I know people are like, these are really dumb bosses. I love the idea. It was hilarious to me. It was such a different concept of a boss fight. And I really enjoyed the boss fight. I really enjoyed it a lot. It was funny to me. And then when you grab the color pencils and you just sh slam it into the box was such a fun thing. That was really fun. The Missile Maestro. That was the name of the color pencils, right? The Missile Maestro. All right. So that's this area. So moving on to the blue streamer after we beat them and everything. Then we end up in the blue streamer, where we meet Bobby, the Bubom enters. It was so funny meeting Bubom. Like he's like, "Hey, I'm just going to his travels." Like, uh... and you're like, "Maybe we can work together." He's like, "Nah, I don't need to work with you guys." He's like, "Okay, maybe I need to work with you guys." Like that was really funny. And then yeah, he doesn't go anywhere with you. He just he, well, he goes with you, but he just stays outside and sleeps and naps and all that stuff. And you got the water, the value metal shrine. Then the Eddie River, Bobby's with you for that the first time. Then, oh yeah, then we're at Shogun Studios and we're doing like the House of Tricky Ninjas. What's the song when you clear it? Okay. And then that was really fun, like the House of Tricky Ninjas and we're doing all that. And then there's the, the big... The, the the womp just coming after you. That was really cool. And everything there with like the Goomsha and the, and the Ninja Sniffit and all that was really fun. It was a fun area. Exploring Shogun Studios. And then we got that reference to Color Splash with the guy with the, with the straw. Just all these fun things. Exploring Autumn Mountain. Oh yeah, Chestnut Valley is where Bobby had that really bad time, I think it was, right? It was wrong way. Like, this was hilarious. Chestnut Valley was hilarious. Like, yeah, the, the torture that Bobby went through was hilarious. Or is it in the Odd Mouse area? Like, Chestnut Valley, I think, is where it happened. That was a really funny area. I enjoyed that a lot. Now there's music for each of the masks. So, Goomba Mask, which of course makes Olivia laugh so much. Donkey Kong Mask. It was fun having those masks on, like, freaking Metroid masks. Straight up Samus masks, like, what? Prince of Parade, Olivia having fun. And yeah, Olivia, right? She's going crazy, like, I really want to check out Shogun Studios, and she has so much fun there. She goes all, like, Shogun hat as well with her head and everything. Which is cool is that her crown has emotion. Like, her crown does things. Oh, it was the Wild West stuff. The Western... Yeah, the Western begins. And we did like West Side Story with Birdo. And right here is a key thing where people are like, oh, maybe Olivia's a lesbian, because Olivia was really into Birdo's entrance. She's like, that was really hot. <laughs> and, and I, I think there's another moment where she's like that too. And then, then there's the 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 boss, the rubber band man. Or rubber band whatever it is. Tragedy Elastic Entertainer. 
It's very theatrical and everything. You got the blue streamer fight. Which was really fun. That was a fun area. I was here thinking. And then, of course, you go to the yellow streamer, where, of course, after the river, Olivia gets crushed by her own brother. And so we have to travel to the sea with bub -Om. Like, it was a uh, super boost. So it seems like maybe bub -Om stuff's happening in the purple area. And then, at, like, all that stuff. So we're with bub -Om. Like, I'll talk about it now. We're with bub -Om, right? And he's like, you know, we bub -Oms. We don't live very long lives. We have to make our... When we explode, we have to make it count. And then you get his fuse and you're like, Oh yeah, I never noticed. He never had his fuse on this whole time. Never realized that. And we we he goes on this quest of revenge with you after his amnesiac quest, when the explosions reminded him of who he was. And you go on a revenge quest with him and you kill the gooper blooper that killed his friends. Like, that's what happens there because we don't recover any bub -Oms. We only recover toads. After that point, like, when we get to the purple streamer, the bob -Oms buddies died, and he's the only one who survived and just uh, washed up and was amnesiac. And then we get revenge for him. And with that done, all that Bobby's got left to do is to decide how does he die. And this is a key thing that makes you just think about bob -Oms. They're like, yeah, they do have short lives. They just, they give their life, and then that's it for a bob -Oms. So it's important to them how they die. It really makes sense. Because the truth of the matter for all of us, none of us are immortal. We're all mortal people. And so we only can do so much with the time we have, so we should you know, do what we can with it. And then some of us, we, we, how do we want to go out? How do we want it to end kind of thing? And Babam chooses, at this moment is, he knows his life must end someday. And he chooses that the end of his life is to save his friend Olivia. And then, of course, after he dies, it sinks in for Olivia what has happened. And it sinks in for us as well, because uh, Bombette kind of ruins it a little bit in that I, we've, we've had bob -Oms explode before in Paper Mario. And that was Bombette. She blows up and just comes right back after. Which, I guess, is what makes Bombette so special. She's an immortal bomb, -Bomb I suppose? I forget, I think she says something like, yeah, I can just keep blowing up. I don't, it's been a long time since that game. But you need her for puzzles, so she need, you need to blow up for puzzles. But here, they make it that the bombs have the one life. And that was the thing I was wondering, is he just going to show up again? He doesn't. He stays dead. He's gone. And he's dead. And it hits Olivia when she realizes, which really hit me. It's like, oh, this little girl's understanding, like she's seeing death. She's understanding that her friend died for her. That if, potentially, if Olivia was able to avoid the rock, they could have found another way around or to push the rock out of the way. They did not need to kill to have Bobby die. And that's the thing, is maybe there was another way, but they didn't have time because, well, they, they're trying to k catch Ollie before everything gets messed up too much. But also, there's no telling how long Olivia could last under that rock kind of situation as well. And so Bob was like, this is the only way. This is the way. And he blows up. And he saves her. And then it's up to you to help Olivia feel better. Yeah, there's a Bob Bob's determination. This is when he's deciding well, this, what's going to happen. He's going to blow up. Like him remembering there. And then he's like, oh, this is it, partner. This is what's going to happen. And then he just blows up. And just... Like, Mario doesn't want him to do it. Even Mario tears up, if I remember correctly. He, he at least looks sad. That's the one, like, little details. Like, we don't have Mario tearing up with Olivia's death, but you know he's thinking about her uh, at that end scene. And then, of course, she's sad. And we go back, and my mom's like, dude, you gotta help her. You gotta, you gotta get her out of it. You guys have work to do. You gotta get her out of her funk. And push forward because that that his death meet has loses some of its meaning if they don't keep going. So they need to push forward and take on well Ollie. They just got to keep going. And of course Mario makes her feel better with the Goomba mask. And let's just skips over that with the Goomba mask. 
And she laughs, and she's like, all right, you're right, Bobby wouldn't like it if I just sat here crying. And then they move forward. People feel like she recovered way too quickly, and I think, yeah, they could have had her remember Bobby maybe one or two more times before we run into the other bub -omb. That is a possibility they could have done. But it's like, she knows, like, well, we, ha we are racing against time, we gotta take out my brother, we gotta take him on, so... We gotta just keep going, so she she pushes it back for now. Who's Bucket Panic? I don't remember! Uh, the Fire Velvet, okay, and all that stuff happening there. Sweet Paper Valley... And then we end up, of course, in the desert, and then there's this song, My Hearts Are Burning! Da -da -da. Doo -doo. It was really funny having her a fan of karaoke, which is really cute, and having that song happen and everything. There's like four songs in this game, I remember. And she's doing that, that was really cute. Then we yeah, fight all these things, the Shroom City, Sniff City, which is kind of cool. It's like, kind of like Vegasy and then the murals, and the pool was cool, and the music for the pool was cool. Then Temple of Shroom's happening. And all that stuff was like, it's really creepy where everyone doesn't have their face. That was an interesting, creepy thing, dealing with that. And then, yeah, there's the pool song. An interesting just song right there. The Mummy Goomba. Have a shroom disco. There's a disco going on. I just like you put on the music and the whole point is like, I hate it. I hate it. And then eventually there's Thrills at Night, which is... I think that's it. Yeah, that's the one right there. Like, that was such a nice dance number. It's like, that's cool. That's great. And Disco Devil, I think, is the other song. And then... Yeah, Disco Devil's the end because the whole punch is a Disco Devil. But this was just a fun moment. It was a really fun moment in the game, for sure. I think this is my favorite fun moment. Like, Old Sappy's a really good one, too. I think my favorite fun moment is this song right here. It's like, oh, this is just... This is so silly. I love it. Then we get to the purple streamer with Captain T. Ode in the Great Sea. We're exploring Bonehead Island, Iron Crown of Bonehead Island, Crescent Moon Island, Hammer Island, Club Island, Feeling Fun Guy. Which I think is where you find the four. Is either where you find the four or where you find uh, the other four? <laughs> it's four or four. Or is it five? I forget. Yeah, a lot of fun adventures with Olivia, and then you do the do the do the deep sea stuff and then you of course find the origami workshop and like oh this is where she was made like oh wow we're we're learning all this here okay that's pretty cool like we get origin and all that Damn it all. Uh, damn it all. the trials oh yeah the legend of zelda stuff going on i was like wow now that's the thing is nintendo games are self-referential here and there is what happened or Kirby has references to the other universes as well. And after all, Smash Brothers. So Smash Brothers has uh, has established now that all these universes are connected. And of course, Kirby's the hero of all the universes, so that's great. Um, over here. Question, actually. I'm actually kind of curious. Like, I'm curious if these are related in some way to their character songs in Legend of Zelda games. Like, uh, the Gerudo Village in Ocarina of Time is one of my favorite songs of all time. Just mentioning that. Uh, the Princess Peach ship. That, the ship was a really fun thing to do. Uh, Paper Macho, Goober Gloop, Blooper. Yeah, they, they have these all here, but these were done earlier in the story. Ice Valumental. That polar bear. Oh, the ice slide. You're just sliding around with Olivia. And... It was fun. These fights were fun. And Olivia makes it really fun, too. Oh, yeah. Remembering Shogun Studios when she pets the... The chain chomp was really cute there. Sea Tower. Oh, yeah. All this stuff you had to do there. And there's the purple streamer battle. I didn't mention the other ones, right? So the rubber band fight was... They're such creative fights. The rubber band fight's pretty fun. I like how you just stretch them out and everything. You fight the real rubber band. And then, uh, what was after... Uh, hole punch. The hole punch fight was very interesting. I love the variety of the boss fights in this. 
it's something that has always been really fun is the boss fights having such variety has always been a fun thing about the Paper Mario games. That it just being like you just straight up fight a thing that's really cool in some other RPGs. And of course we take on the Purple Streamer, we take on uh, the Tape boss, which has another interesting variety to it where you gotta break the dispenser, then you gotta just pull out all the tape and it's using its own life to fight you. There's a lot of really fun stuff going on. Unsettling area battle? I assume that's with all them taped up. The shifty sticker is what that one's called. God, there was such good music in this game. Oh yeah, there we are. Next area, the green streamer. Then we get to the green streamer with Shangra Spa, which was such a funny thing. And Olivia just really loving the the hot springs and I wish to go to hot springs someday. I really want to have that experience. The best I've got is going to just a spa with just uh, a jacuzzi and things like that. And those are pretty nice too. That's not the same thing, obviously. And they meet Kamek and you have to work with Kamek, which I don't think we've ever done in a game. Which is cool when she thinks he's just a groundskeeper. I love those jokes. Those were good. And then you have the sumo bros and dealing with that and then Bowser Jr. comes in and just gets sliced up, which is such a fun, it's like, holy crap, kind of moment. And then we had to, of course, restore Bowser Jr. a bunch. And Olivia, of course, falling apart and having to get refolded by Kamek was so interesting. She's like, she was just enjoying, she was just in it too much. Because that was the increasing uh, spring. Rainbow's Path. The Shy Guys finished last. A freaking game show out of nowhere, which was really fun. I think I did the 100% version. Tell me how it works. Today's contestant, try to send death round, ring scramble, race and plays, ninja skills. That was all fun to do, but also stressful to do. Oh yeah, the jungle, right. So the jungle was before that. With the freaking chain chomp. With the, the, yeah, this right here. Paper Monster chain chomp was so scary. Like, oh snap. I found it very interesting where everyone has their opinions of where to go, and Olivia goes to the ones that are going to get you killed every time. For some reason, she's a really bad judge of where to go, but you could still trust her, and I trusted her every time, which was a mistake. Is this unleashed? Don't remember that one, Bowser's Castle. Oh yeah, then there's the Hanaconda and then the Buzzy Beetle. Those were very interesting. Like, the face is talking, it's all creepy, and then... Oh yeah, having all the... Just having the minion army take on the paper army was really... was The origami army was really cool. And then Bowser's encouragement. Oh yeah, so this is getting to the end here. Bowser encouraging. It's like, we're gonna take them on! Get them from the sky! Nervous about, nervous about taking on her brother, of course. There's all the airships. The airship fighting was pretty fun, I like that a lot. Incoming at battle at Bowser's Castle, the Green Streamer fight. Green Streamer, of course, was the scissors, and it's like, oh snap, and just blowing that fight and getting cut up. Jumping into the scissors like a dummy was really great. Yeah, the dual bladed duelist. I felt real smart in that fight. Oh, uh, whoops. Did not mean to do that. Special, so the big ending here. We took on the scissors, it was a pretty fun and intense battle, of course. And then we get to the the, the volcano, and then oh, everything's attacking, you got this big army coming after you. And... Hmm, alright. You got this big army coming after you, and Kamek sacrifices himself, Bowser Jr. sacrifices himself. Bowser's gotta watch all of this, he's like, oh no! My boy! I still remember, like, the scissors come at you and Bowser's like, Watch out, Mario! And then you you survive, and he's like, I take credit for that. <laughs> that was always a funny line to me. The writing of this whole thing is just very enjoyable. This music is so good. Of course, we get Olivia's last bench. Like she's like, can she really take on her brother? And Bowser's like, yeah. <laughs> I like how Bowser puts it in perspective. Look, I've got a son. I gotta take care of this boy. And it's crazy, and it's scary. But I gotta do it. And that puts, just puts her like, oh huh, wow, yeah, there's a lot of hard things to do, huh? Alright, let's go do this thing. <laughs> and of course, before that, we take on the fanged fastener, the stapler. 
And there's all the battling with King Ollie, like Ollie's throne room. You see the 999 cranes, which I assume, I'm not going to go back and count, but there are so many cranes, I find it believable there's 999 there. There's probably like 500 in that room. You don't see the other 500 or something, because that's a lot of cranes. That's a lot of detail, though. Olivia is transferring for the final time for the hammer. Got Origami Overlord. Battle of King Ali. Got that dark kind of music going on there. The music was really epic for that fun. It was really epic. It was really good. Then King Ali versus Mega Bowser. Now these I'm curious about. We didn't. I know we didn't hear these. Bowser on the brink. So the music changes when Bowser's on the brink of losing, and when Ollie's on the br on the brink, this is the music we normally heard. So I guess this is more Bowser's themes beating out his theme kind of thing. Which of course I didn't notice. The dude's trap missions for everyone. Yeah, there's a darker tone to that one. When Olivia transforms Bowser, though. There's that tone to it. Olivia's plea. And there's all these... Alright, they beat him, and he's like, uh... But then there's one more form to go. Final form, and then Olivia's final magic circle. We just saw this in, a minute ago. We just saw this in the last episode, of course. That final battle was just so epic. It was really fun. I enjoyed it a bunch. The music was just so good, so bombastic to it all thing. And there's just all the extra songs going on here. Legion Stationary enters. Olivia Transform song and all that. Then there's Superstar. We picked up Superstar like one or two times in this game. The Streamer Removal song, which we heard five times. Which is a cool sound. Like, Confetti Max game was a cool sound as well. Oh, there was a song for when all streams were cleared, huh? Okay. I guess I didn't notice that. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Sensor Lab, Toad Radar, Cafe... Cafe yeah, had a nice tune to it. Game over screen. The ending, staff credits, and then pay Mario the Oregon King. Which of course is the main theme, which is also the Toe Town song, which you get it all complete. So overall we had to rate this whole thing. I think the music was obviously amazing. The music gets a 10. The gameplay can go back and forth on it. I think the gameplay in general, the puzzle fighting of it. It's really a fun idea. It does get grindy. It, not grindy, but it does get boring eventually, like any fighting system will. So I'd give it like a 7, but because of the boss fights, it puts it up to like an 8 or a 9, in my opinion, just because the boss fights are so interesting. Basic movement stuff's pretty good. There are times, though, where you do kind of get, like, just... You don't get the 2D messes with you a little bit. But I think, yeah, 8's a good solid spot for gameplay, for sure. We know for sure, uh, for me, the writing is a 10. The heavy moments are really well done. The county moments are hilarious. That's just all well done there. And just the visuals are great. Very good visuals. But of course, part of the complaint I just had about the gameplay, so I guess that's like I, maybe 9 or still a 10. And there's other words I don't know that can be said. Uh, comedy is good. Just the It's just a good game. That's why I give it a 10 out of 10. It's a 10 out of 10 game for me. It was emotionally impactful, it was really funny, I just enjoyed it a lot. I did not regret any minute of playing this game, I really enjoyed it. And that is everything. We've done it all. So that is a 100% run, by the way, of course. So we've fully done the whole game. Paper Mario, the Origami King. And I hope we see Olivia again. I don't think... Olivia somehow coming back diminishes anything she did. She wanted this big, amazing adventure, and she was willing to put her life on the line. And she did put her life on the line for everything. To save Peach, to save everyone affected by what Ollie did. To undo his destruction. And 
It's just so emotionally impactful for me. I just I can't believe how much I was affected by a fictional character. The it, the deck you just started for 2020, my favorite character is Olivia. 2010, it was Isabel. Uh, 2000s, I don't remember right now. 90s, of course, is Kirby, and the 80s is Mario. And that is it. Now, I'm saying as Nintendo characters, if we go through the entire gaming world, I wonder what those are. 90s is still Kirby, 80s is still Mario. Over 2000s, I wonder what it would be. 2010s is still Olivia, uh, Isabel probably, and right now it's going to be Olivia for 2020. But there's not a lot of new characters yet, so we'll see how the, the decade goes. But that is everything. That is a look back at this game. So many fun moments. The highest high for me, I think, is probably the song moments or just the funny stuff with Bobby just constantly getting hit around, which is kind of funny to me. The lowest moments, of course, is losing Olivia and losing Bobby. Those hit me like a truck. Losing Bobby really hit me hard. And I guess it set me up to get hit harder when we lost Olivia. And you can assume just Bobby's willingness to sacrifice himself made her understand, like, it's okay to do that kind of move. To, to do a move that it ends you, but it does so much more for so many other people. So it's, it's, a, it's a loss for you, but it's a huge gain for everyone else kind of situation, like what Bobby did. And it just makes her decision just so impactful. That's what you want in in a move like that is you want if the if the character if the main character has to do a sacrifice play it has to have meaning to it because there are media games shows movies things like that where a character will sacrifice himself and sometimes it has no impact whatsoever because there's not enough to give it the weight that it needs and the weight was so heavy here it was incredibly impactful losing olivia it was incredibly impactful losing uh bobby and it's just, it, it's such an interesting echo where you had this little version of it with Bobby where you go on this little adventure with Bobby for a little bit. He has these great memories with him and everything, and then they take him away from you. He dies, and not realizing that there's a bigger version of the story happening at the same time with Olivia, where she's going through all these adventures and having all this fun and all these great memories and having all these plans for what she's going to do after you stop Ollie. And then she dies, too. It is amazing how well done that was. It's amazing how impactful it was for me. This is... This really got me. There are books, there are shows, there are movies that impact people very strongly. And this game is one of those ones that can do that. And that's something I really... I really gr like. Like... Movies have made me feel sad, for sure. They made me feel a lot of emotions. TV shows have done the same thing. I can think of maybe one or two where TV shows made me cry. Books have never pulled that off. Books have made me have like a lot of good laughs and happy moments, but the low moments are like like sad in like damn that's messed up kind of ways. But never a I've never felt an attachment to a character in a book, where losing them made me just hurt so much like Olivia has right here. So it's just such a testament for me of what you can do with gaming, just how what can be pulled off. They pulled it off here for me. I mentioned all the other games that have made me really sad and cry. And yeah. That's everything. Origami King, 10 out of 10 for me. Game of the year right now. We'll see if anything beats it. It came out of nowhere for a lot of people. And it was great. Anyone who has not played this game because they're mad about whatever this or that with Nintendo is doing a disservice to themselves. Because it is... An amazing game they should play. So that right there is the full LP of Paper Mario the Origami King. Gonna miss Olivia. I need to learn origami because I want to make a little Olivia for sure. If a plush happens, somebody let me know because I would like to buy one. That's it. I had fun. Hope you had fun watching. And that's what it's all about, isn't it? Having fun. Thanks for coming by and I hope to see you at the next LP.